Imagine if the solution to climate change or the idea to create a swatch cleaning robot for an entire village lies with a young girl in rural India. I am Aditi Prasad, and I'm committed to empowering young girls in India to be creators and innovators. Through coding education, we at Indian Girls Code aim to bridge the gender gap and digital divide in our country. I was privileged to be brought up in an environment that empowered me to be anything I wanted to be. From a very young age, my parents respected my sisters and my inquisitiveness and the choices we made. But that is not the case for most girls in our country. Gender bias starts very, very early, and it's especially prevalent in fields that are traditionally seen as masculine. Young girls themselves hesitate to join these fields. Parents don't encourage robotics classes for their girls and would rather enroll them in dance, art, or music. While there's nothing wrong with the arts, of course, but these must be chosen voluntarily by boys or girls based on personal interest and ability, and not as a fallback option because they're wrongly deemed incapable of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. In a recent survey conducted in schools, with a 50-50 proportion of boys and girls, where science and math are mandatory, indicated that girls heavily outperform boys. But when you make math and science optional, the picture changes radically. By the time you get to college, women opting for science is half of what it was at the school level. And when you get to the workspace, that figure drops by half again. Then 50% of women leave employment between junior to mid-level career, and sometimes they never return, which means 50% of trained women stop contributing to the economy and adding that unique female perspective. Now, assuming we started off with 50-50 at the school level, by the time we get to mid-level career, women represent only 7% of the workforce. In the next 10 to 15 years, Autonomous electrical vehicles, data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and shared economy businesses like Uber and Airbnb will change the complete landscape of countries and societies. If we don't equip our kids with the requisite skills, the digital divide and gender gap will widen and leave them culturally and economically far behind. And we definitely can't leave our girls and women behind, especially if all they need is access to the right tools. We have to close that gap right now. So my sister Deepti and I co-founded Indian Girls Code to bridge the gender gap and inspire young girls to be innovators, creators, and leaders. Although our programs run across all sectors of society, we focus on the underprivileged girls' communities who don't have access to quality education and who under the pressure of poverty and tradition, may otherwise deny their own STEM skills. Now, it must be strange for most people to hear that kids can code or need to code. All those lines that we understand as code can seem daunting, right? But let me show you what it's like to code like a kid today. With Scratch, an open source software from MIT, you just drag the blocks together and create a sequence of commands. So just like Lego blocks, you put the blocks together, and the stacks of blocks create a story or a game, like this one made by a nine-year-old. So kids take an idea, break it down to simple steps, and create powerful projects. Now, can you imagine if a child wants to create a robot that is voice-controlled that can clean his or her room? Now, I'm going to let you use your voice and control this robot and make it move from point A a little bit across the stage. So on the count of three, can you all scream hello till I tell you to stop? One, two, three. Hello. Keep on going till I tell you to stop. Hello. Hello. Louder. Hello. Okay, excellent. Isn't learning to code fun? So as Mitch Resnick of MIT puts it, coding is like reading. First, you learn to read, and then you read to learn. 
So just like that with coding, first you learn to code, and then you code to learn. So in addition to learning mathematical and computational ideas like variables and conditionals, you also learn strategies to solve problems, design projects, and communicate your ideas. According to a Harvard Business Review report, the second most impo important motivator for a woman in choosing her career is her ability to contribute to the well-being of society. Giving girls access to technology that they can use to solve problems that they face in their communities, cities or countries, can get them excited about learning with technology and ensure that they stay back in STEM. So we incorporated this need into our programs, and we have dozens of inspiring stories. So in 2015, I went down to Trichy to visit an all-girls orphanage called Anne Ashram. These girls were from highly dysfunctional and underprivileged families. Their parents, if they had any, were victims of domestic abuse, beggars, some even prisoners. A typical life cycle of a girl of this orphanage would be to finish free public school, join a local tailoring shop, get married to an equally poorly educated low-income earner, and send their children back to the same orphanage. It is a vicious cycle. So now these young girls who've been learning coding and electronics had a great idea. They wanted to create a home alarm system for their orphanage. Now, realizing that safety was an emotional concern, these children had solved a real-world problem using the technology they had played with. These girls are inventors. Ten-year-old Abhinaya, who wants to join the Indian police force, wants to make a robot that can be used to rescue people. 12-year-old Mahalakshmi wants to create a robot that can help old people, while 13-year-old Elakya wants to create a robot that will make her super successful and bring her lots of money. All it takes is their dream and the access to the right tools. So in 2015, Chennai was hit with a major flood. Homes were lost, the city was underwater, their normal life was completely disrupted, and there was no electricity for days together. The children from a slum area here in Chennai came back emotionally and physically devastated from their experiences. A group of three kids came up to the teacher and said that they wanted to create an animation software to express what they had experienced. These kids created a one-and-a-half-minute movie with 534 images, some clippings of newspapers, and some hand-drawn by them. These kids were creators. So we at Indian Girls Code have learned one very important lesson on the way. We cannot leave the boys out. We encourage boys and girls to learn together, to create together, and to work together. When young boys see girls working capably with technology and work alongside them in creating that technology, that's where the change begins, and they realize that they're genuine equals. This is our vision to bridge the gender gap in STEM and the digital world, and to promote the presence and contribution of women in the workspace. Our dream is to see girls from places like Anna Ashram graduate from university and work in jobs that change their perspective and thereby change their families' future perspectives and prospects. This is where our work starts, with a single girl and the opportunities we can afford her. Shakti is an ancient Indian mystical concept of feminine power. Perhaps it's time to revive it in a thoroughly modern way in this contemporary world. Thank you.